blog is about groups, group signatures and more for misogynies and lattices, generic, simple and efficient. It's a work by Yifu Lai, Ward uh, Bulens, Samuel Dobson, Shuichi Katsumata, uh, Frederico Pintore, and Yifu Lai is giving the talk. Oh, okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Yifu Lai. Today I'm going to present the, this work with a joint work with uh, Ward Bulens, Samuel Dobson, and Shuichi Katsumata, and Federico Pintore. And firstly, uh, we talk about the idea of group signature scheme. Um, intuitively, a group signature is uh, require any member in the group, like a company or a school or a government agent. Anyone, any member in this group can sign anonymously for the group on behalf of the group. But in case of we, we abuse this anonymity, there's a special identity called group manager who can open the signature from the group, which means that he can know who is the signer and provides the proof to for the opening result. And there's three following requirements for, for the group signature. The first one is anonymity, of course. Given a signature from any two people chosen by the adversary, it is possible to tell from which of the two. And if the adversary has access to the uh, opening oracle, then it is called CCA anonymity. Otherwise, it's called CPA anonymity. It's quite similar to the public key encryption. And the other one is unforgeability. Any colluding members, we <coughs> cannot forge your signature, not tracing to any one of them. So if the opener is also corrupt, then it is called for, for an unforgeability. Otherwise, it's just called unforgeability. And the last one is traceability. A uh, fairly signature should be able to open to uh, one and only one user in the group. It cannot be open to more than two users. So we can also give a brief history of group signatures. It was firstly proposed by Chong, Fan Hayes, and by using RSA and DLP assumptions. And it's later, the security notion is later formalized in these two works, profile with framework using verifiable MDCCA, PKE, and use signature scheme. Uh, based on trapdoor permutation functions. And it is so-called the sign and encrypt paradigm. And there has been a lot of applications and real-world de deployments by using uh, group signatures like the direct anonymous attestation, enhanced privacy ID, and a, a, a variety of applications in blockchain and cryptocurrency studies. And there has been a lot of post-quantum proposal after 2010 mainly donated donor by latest instance. And recently, several proposals has achieved a logarithmic property, where the signature size is logarithmic in the number of members, which means that uh, even though your group is very, very large, your signature size still can be very compact. But most of them are latest instance, and they use some new technique from latest cryptography. So of course, this kind of technique cannot be applied to, like say, isogenic cryptography. So can we have an isogenic group signature scheme that is competitive enough among other post-quantum proposals? The answer is, of course, yes. That's why I'm here. The standard, but the, what's the difficulty is that the standard sign and encrypt technique requires INDCCA verifiable encryption scheme because we mainly we need to use the decryption oracle in CCA again to answer the opening oracle in the anonymity again. And we also require MIZK for the cipher text and the plain text relation. But unfortunately, we don't have this kind of scene, the particle tool in isogenies with some standard assumptions. Uh, this is because like SIDH or CSI, they all use um, like shared secret key exchange to obtain encryption. They hash the shared value and as the padding to encrypt the message. So because we use hash, hash function here, we can now have an um, efficient MIZK for this in relation. So our solution is that we construct a new verifiable MDCPA PK with unlike extractable, unlike extractable MIZK, which uh, unlike extractable means that if you are given a proof, then we can like by observing the random, the random oracle, then you can extract the secret witness from your proof. But uh, our PK here is weakly decryptable which means that um, 
the six the message space of our PKE should be like small, like polynomial size in lambda, but it is good enough to give us the following contribution. The first one, we present a new practical framework for group signatures based on group actions. We also give isogeny and lattice instantiations. And the signature size is logarithmic. We also provide tightly secure variant for our two instantiations. And it is also the first uh, group signature from isogeny and the only logarithm one because there are some concurrent works. And the isogeny instantiation has the smallest signature size in the literature among other post-quantum proposals. But in this call, talk, we will mainly focus on the isogeny instantiation here. And this is a simple comparison with other, other isogeny instantiations. And we have the, best, the most compact signature size and the best security uh, guarantee for the users. So this is the super high level of our construction here. Uh, as you may know, if you have a relation and have statement and witness W, and if, if you have MIZK for this relation, or in our instance, we use scan protocol and fiat shamir transform, you can have a signature skin. And by extent, it is spanned by all proof relation. All proof relation means that uh, there's a bunch of statements here, and your witness is only for one of them. And if you have MIZK for this relation, you can have a ring signature. It doesn't matter if you don't know what's ring signature. And the next one, we add PKE, uh, PK encryption relation here. We add the ciphertext to encrypt the index here. And then with randomness R, and we add R into the witness here. So we add ciphertext in, into the statement and add randomness R into the witness. And if you have online extractable relation, uh, MIZK for this relation, then you can have a group signature with CCA anonymity. And the final one is to have full unforgeability. And we have to uh, have um, an IZK relation for the decryption relation, which means the relation between the plain text and the cipher text and the key relation, which means the uh, public key relation and the decryption key relation. And remark that the PKE here, we only require IMD CPA. So a sigma protocol for a relation is a three-move interactive protocol among a prover with the secret witness and the verifier with the statement. They do commit, commitment, challenge, and response, and the verifier accept or not, because the shape is like a sigma, so it is called a sigma protocol. And we recall the definition of uh, group actions. Uh, a group acts on a set by an action if it has identity and compatibility. Oh. And of course, to have a cryptography construction, we need the hardness assumption. Here, if you are given the operation of the action, gx and x, it is still difficult to recover g. For example, let n be a natural number, let, let g to be Zn, and x to be the cyclic group of order m, define gx to be x to the g. The hardness here is based on the discrete logarithm of uh, this cyclic group. And the isogeny instantiation we are taken from C side uh, together with the optimization given by BK, BKV19 with the efficient sampling method. So we are have a group action G acts on the set, a super single curve, and we have a spatial curve that's called E0. <clears throat> that is a super single ED curve and well known can be taken from this set. And the, this is called, uh, we have something wrong here. This is called group action in, in first problem. If you are given uh, SE0, where SE is sample from the group G, it is hard to recover as the secret isogeny. And the final definition is the group action based PKE. Um, there are two groups, G and GM, both acting on the same set X. And GM contains the message space M acts on X by a public action 
And the other action is given by the key generation algorithm. It is part of the public key of the encryption scheme and related to the secret key here. And we define the action, uh, the encryption of message N is the ciphertext is M acts on R acts on XPK by the public action and the public key action respectively with the randomness R here. And we do not specify the decryption relation here, but we, of course, we require the correctness. And we also assume the PKE is IND CPA secure. Uh, for example, we can we also, we also construct uh, uh, this so-called GAPKE instantiation from isogeny by using C side again. And remark that we require the message space to be small, uh, like a polynomial in Lambda. Um, this is because we have to, to decrypt. We decrypt by enumerating elements in the message space. Otherwise, it return, if no such message found, it return perp. And the uh, harness, the, this PKE is IND CPA based on the distributional C side problem. And finally, we can talk about our technical overview. Uh, we start from the OR proof, or say the OR relation taken by BKP20. Firstly, there is a stat statement OR relation we stated before. There is a, a bunch of statements here. And you have a secret witness for one of them. And the verification key will be this bunch of statements here. And the witness will be your secret signing key for each member. So we will do this by using Sigma protocol. Uh, so firstly, the prover produce a bunch of uh, isogeny and, and group actions, and you shuffle them and obtain a set. This is the commitment of the prover. The next is challenge. Challenge is either zero or one. If challenge is zero, then the prover provide this bunch of school elements, and the verifier just recomputes these sets, these elements, and see whether the, the set he compute is identical to the one given by the prover. If the challenge is one, then the uh, verifier, no, the prover just provide SI plus SI prime. And by acting on XO, the verifier will check whether this will fall into the set given by the for, uh, prover. If so, uh, accept, otherwise reject. And this is a second protocol. So the next step is we add the encryption relation into this, this, this relation. And the key idea is we concatenate and shuffle two proofs together. Recall that we have a ciphertext now to encrypt the secret message uh, I and together with the randomness R. So we do something similar here and, and something uh, and uh, the information in blue, which means it's public, like negative one, negative two, negative n, and this common statement here, ciphertext one, ciphertext two, ciphertext n, they are public. And the proof of two uh, group actions again with two n distinct group elements and obtain a set again and shuffle them together so the, pro the challenge is also either zero or one here. If challenge is zero, then the prover provides these two N group elements and the verifier recompute this part and see whether these two sets are identical. And if challenge is one, uh, the prover also provides SI plus SI prime, but he also provides R plus R I prime here. And by acting on the, the public, uh, success element given taken from the public key from the prover, from the no from the opener, then the verifier can check whether this element will fall into the set of the committed cipher text here CTI prime. This set, if so, accept. Otherwise, he reject. So the next the next step is to we need to make the proof to be logarithmic. We use student random number generator, Merkle tree, and commitment skin. We call that here the prover. He used uh, two undistinct 
group elements. And here we just use two, two elements here with S prime and R prime. And then the, they do the, the prover do the commitment with randomness bits one to bit n. And then he apply Merkle, the prover apply Merkle tree and obtain a root. This root will be the commitment of this sigma protocol. And all randomness S prime S prime, R prime, and bit one to bit n, they are all generates by a pseudo random number generator by a single seed. And the challenge is also either zero or one here. And if challenge is one, the prover now just provide a seed and the verifier recompute this all randomness and compute whether the verifier can see, obtain the same root. Now, if the Challenge is one, then the prover provide the randomness B for the commitment skin and the path of the Merkle tree lead to the root. And the verifier just check whether this additional information can lead to the same root. If so, accept, otherwise he reject. So in this, uh, in this Sigma protocol, we can have online extractability, which means that if you obtain a proof, we can obtain the, we can extract the secret witness by observing the random oracle. And we do this by modeling our should random number generator, commitment skin, and Merkle tree as a random oracle. And the main reason we can do this because the challenge is the size space is just two. And the response can, one of the response, the C here can be obtained by observing the random oracle because we model the should random number generator as a random oracle. And I'll repeat the sigma protocol we mentioned before, lambda time. The interactive protocol will have two to the lambda security strengths. And by using fiat shaming first transform, it can be non-interactive. And for the proof, roughly speaking, the unlike trapability and IND spirit will give us CC anonymity. And with a hardness assumption of the action, it gives us unforgeability, not, but not the full unforgeability. And remark that we have a ciphertext here in the statement. So the manager just who owned the, the secret key, the decryption key of this public key encryption. So he can, the manager can just open the signature by using the decryption key you now. So it suffice to construct an NIDK for the decryption relation and the key relation to have traceability and for unforgeability. Uh, we specify the relation here, and by using the similar method we mentioned before, we can obtain a MyZK for this relation. Um, the prover now, the open, or say the opener, the manager, provide the proof for the opening result using this NIZK. Then we will, you can have traceability and for unforgeability. We also have other results, uh, like we. We further reduce the signature size by using the unbalanced challenge space, uh, which means that because you can see when challenge is zero, then the proof will just provide a C, which is much smaller than the response for challenge one, a bunch of stuff here. So we use more zero challenge than one, then we can have a more compact signature size. And we give a uh, GIPKE for latest instantiation by using Linda Piker framework. So we don't, the, the message space can be large here. And we also reduce the signature size for our latest instantiation by using Gabriel, uh, Bay Gabriel's method. We provide the tightly secure variant by using the so-called cat one method. The unfortunately reduction loss is simply one half. In general, in the, the other work, it is it has a quadratic loss followed by n square loss. And the additional cost in our, in our first gen is just a constant. Concretely, it is a, a 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 kilobytes, but the signing key and the verification process will be slowed down by a factor of two. So it is quite a cheap, uh, quite a cheap overhead. So finally, um, in this wall, as we mentioned before, we present the most secure, the most secure group signature among the, the group signature proposals. And our isogeny instance has the smallest, the most compact signature size in the literature. 
And this is a free summary uh, of a few of our contributions. Like we mentioned before, we present a new framework from Group Institute by using group actions with ISA journey and latest instantiations achieving all ideal security properties. And the proof, the framework is logarithmic. The size is very compact. And we also provide the tightly secure variant for our uh, two instantiations. And we perform the first group signature from ISA journeys and the only logarithmic one. And this is the work we present. Hope you find this is interesting. Thank you for listening. Do we have any questions? <laughs> Hi, thanks for your talk. Um, I've seen some other ring signature constructions where the verifier is logarithmic. Sorry, the signature size is logarithmic, but the verifier is actually um, linear. Um, is your construction like this, or is the verifier also logarithmic? Uh, you mean the verification key? Uh, the, verif the, the verification time for the signature. Verification time for the signature. Um, the perfect chance for signature you have to do. Sorry, what did you mean? The computational cost of the verifier, I think, is the yeah. question. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. It is you need to do if the there are n members in the group, then you have to do n times. You still have to do n times group actions check. Okay, so there's not like um like in some constructions, there's like a succinct representation of the group of users that then the verifier uses to save time but it's not like that mm, yep okay thanks yep. very much any other questions then let's thank the speaker again